to this part of good morning family and today we're having a conversation about a homecoming about alumni you know um one of the best things that can happen uh to persons is when you meet people we have not seen for a long time especially if you've been through school but this time we are talking about uh, the homecoming by compassion international we're going to find out what it is when it is and why it's happening and my guests today who are going to take us through this homecoming i have sewira benon who is um, an alumni with uh, compassion international and i also have with me mr derek who is also an alumni and they are going to take us through what we can expect but first and foremost there are people who i know compassion international is um, well renowned but there are some people who may not know what a Compassion International is and what it does. So can you take us through the history of Compassion International, what, when it started, what it is, and what happens, what are the activities that Compassion International does? Okay, good morning, viewers. My name is Benon, as he has introduced me. I happen to be an alumni of Compassion International Uganda, and uh, I went through Compassion uh, in the Masaka cluster. But again, I was privileged also to serve in Kampala cluster as staff, first as a sports and donor communications officer, and then also to a level of a project director. Compassion International is an organization that is in, uh, majoring in holistic child development, and uh, basically it is all about Christianity, raising children in Christian values, but most of all, they pick the needy of the neediest from all the communities they have served, and they have worked for as much as I can remember Compassion International uh, began its work in Uganda way back in 1980s and uh, through all those years we've seen so many projects coming on board in different parts of the country yeah that's briefly what I can say about Compassion International Uganda my colleague can add on <laughs> I think it's all right uh Unlike you, I was uh, one of the people who were uh, supported or sponsored uh, through uh, Compassion International, and I was actually in the uh, branch of Agape in Entinda. Uh, so um, I don't have much background of when it exactly started. I think he's really much more precise about that. But all I know is that me, myself, uh, I'm one of the beneficiaries. Fantastic. And uh, talking about that, that means you're part of the success story of Compassion International Most Uganda. Uh, what other successes can um, you talk about as being uh, part of the objectives, especially when it comes to raising godly children in Uganda? I think that's the biggest, uh, raising uh, God-fearing children, uh, children with uh, Christian values and uh, morals. I think that's the biggest, apart from also empowering us uh, financially and also with uh, academic uh, uh, credits, uh, credentials here and there. Um, the biggest, the core, I think, was always to raise us with the uh, Christian values. Yeah. And um, any successes you can point to? And specifically, what about, well, especially to you, Mr. Derek, uh, who has been there, what principles or values you continue to use this day that you learned as a child of uh, Compassion International Uganda? One is uh, the fear of the Lord uh, through his uh, commandments. I think that's one of the things that we used to be uh, uh, drilled with at least every uh, Saturdays as much as I remember. I don't know if the program's changed. He's, uh, still, I don't know if it's still staff. Um, uh, that's a fear of the Lord through his uh, commandments, uh, loving God, reading the word of God, and uh, also uh, generally everything around God and what he values and uh, what he uh, asks of us. I, I think that that's one of the things I still hold uh, to up to now. Fantastic. All right, let's get into the homecoming. Now, when it comes to the homecoming one, um, I see it is defined as the first. Why is it the first? Because um, if you've said it started in the 1980s, surely we have so many alumni. And on the conversation of the alumni, does that mean um, past children who have been under the care of Compassion Interna International Uganda, or does that also mean staff as well? Can I go first? Yes, please. Um, <coughs> why first? Um, 
compassion has been organized in a way like it works in particular clusters. So there's a cluster of Kampala, that is Kampala block. It has so many projects, but to mention a few, find those of Naklavie as a project in Ugolovi, as a project in uh, Mutuomuna, that is Kasubi, so many of them, Agapentinda, Bukoto, Chambogo, Chiuliriza, it stretches up to Entebbe. So all that catchment area, then there's that side of uh, Caring Heart, I think that side of Wakiso. So all those projects, uh, the children that have gone through, uh, allow me to use our children. Yeah, the children, now we are big children that have gone through compassion in those different, different, different uh, projects are coming together for the first time in one place to remind themselves of what they went through, that porridge we used to share together those days, mother porridge, oh, yeah. yeah, the rice, the posho, and of course the different, different things that we went through. Yes, that's why, uh, why we are saying the first, because uh, yes, we've been in existence for all those years, but getting organized to a level of uh, having uh, or people that went through the program come together under one umbrella, under one of uh, like clear objectives. It is happening for the first time because we have uh, goals that we want to hit to see this ministry continue to grow. Even when we think of compassion now pulling out, we want to create a base here in Uganda that at least the children in need will continue to get support. Absolutely. Now, um, just uh, for clarity, uh, you said one of the objectives is the main objective for Compassion International Uganda is to uh, raise uh, children with godly values. So, um, does Compassion International Uganda uh, offer education, educational support? Um, what, kind, how was that done in terms of raising uh, godly children? A Compassion organized its structure in a way like we work in four core. Uh, core areas. One is the spiritual, of course, where children are taught the word of God, and then two is the socio-economic things to do with the socializing and skills and learning how to work, and then there's the physical, which is to do with health. When a child is sick, anything to do with health or medical, compassion takes care of of that, and then lastly is the cognitive aspect, and that is education. So me, I was picked from P4 up to the university through Compassion and their different programs because after senior six, you, by then we were adopting another program called the Leadership Development Program, still under Compassion. And so that's how Compassion has tried to shape us the way we are. Well, these are powerful testimonies. Now, uh, when it comes to the homecoming, that's uh, for the Kampala cluster, uh, where is it? Uh, um, when is it and at what time is it taking place? When is it? It's uh, this particular Saturday, uh, this week on Saturday. Uh, where is it? It's going to be at Agape, uh, Agape Church in, uh, in Tinda uh, from 9 uh, a.m. in the morning uh, till 4. That's uh, for what I know if we keep time. <laughs> But because of uh, this whole, like he has explained, because it's the first time, I, 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 I don't want to bench on keeping time on when it will end because there's a lot to catch up on. Uh, like someone says, uh, they're from the 80s, us who joined in the 90s or 2000s, uh, they, there's a lot to share. So I wouldn't really want to say it will end at four, though that's what the program says. Uh, but to be precise with your question, uh, four is the uh, end time and nine is the beginning. All right, and is it an open or closed event? By that I mean, um, is everyone welcome? Or because, like you said, it's for alumni, so someone might be thinking, okay, I'm not part, I might not be an alumni, but for example, can I attend? Can I just go uh, and attend? And um, how, what kind of ex activities can you expect on the day? Oh yeah, um, for the activities, I think the staff will tell us more. But uh, for what I can answer, it's both open and closed because it's it's open to all the alumni. But uh, you need to also uh, confirm for better uh, planning. Uh, that's what I mean by close. Um, but I suppose uh, th th there will be some winking here and there, whereas one uh, comes in before or when they haven't confirmed, provided they are. I, that's what I know. Will the alumni be required to pay a, an entrance fee or there is no entrance fee for those? There is no entrance fee. Cluster? 
there's no entrance fee but um i think you can talk more about that okay yeah sure um about entrance there's no entrance yes but uh we've been encouraging the different groups or different projects to at least raise certain kind of contribution to see to it that the function is colorful so we encourage all alumni of different 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 projects to at least get in touch with the current staff at the project and see to it how you can best support this event and also after giving in your money please also do attend physically we understand some of our friends and colleagues are abroad they are no longer staying here I hope we shall create an online kind of link for all of us, even the the, the, the people in diaspora, to follow through what will be taking place. Mm. Yeah, because I've seen one of the projects is Kasanga at CDC, and uh, they, are, they have seen people contributing. I hope other projects are also contributing, and I've seen even those abroad, they are sending in their contributions to see this stay colorful. And what kind of activities are going to happen? Uh, on uh, for the activities, um, one of the things will be to uh, hand in or uh, hand over the alumni movement of Kampala alumni to the overall alumni movement that is CAM, Compassion, something. All those children that went through Compassion now countrywide. So they will be handing over some of, I would say, the powers and authority to the overall supreme body that governs all the alumni movement in Uganda. And then another what does that entail? Can you clarify? Yeah, clarity. That? Yeah, like we are coming up to form a very organized movement that captures and welcomes everyone who has gone through compassion countrywide. But also we shall be having, uh, they call them chapters now for the alumni. We'll be having chapters, let's say Kampala chapter will be for specifically for all those that went through Kampala uh, project, uh, Mbale, Masaka, uh, Kabale, Mbarara, Chiruhura, st stuff like that. So different, different chapters we will be reporting now to the overall umbrella body, that is the Kamu. And so the Kampala cluster will be handing over to Kamu some of the instruments of power because Kampala cluster being in the heart of the city uh, happened to be more organized than any other. So I think that's why they want to do it this way, such that yeah, we enroll activities and now Kampala cluster can, eh, uh, what can I say, it can now budge down to the overall body and yeah, move smoothly. All right, better yeah. organization. All yes. Right. Take us through some uh, other uh, skills. Other uh, we expect skill, uh, different projects to display skills. So those of Entebbe, those of Chuli, these are those different, different projects. Please, we will be expecting some of the skills you do. Uh, what do you mean by skills? Yes. Some, uh, some of the projects are into shoemaking, some projects are into uh, tailoring, uh, other projects are into other, other skills like liquid soap making, bags, to mention but a few. So please prepare all the people that are still on program, a few that can attend the, prog uh, the, the, the activities of th Saturday to display exactly what is still happening in those projects. And we also expect to have some special presentations through music of course we can't be there every i mean the whole day just running through things without some kind of relaxation and then one of the biggest objectives of coming together will be to see how best we can empower other children in our communities knowing that compassion is pulling out in some of the projects especially around kampala those old old projects but the question is is the need over if the need is still there, who is to cover that need? Okay, so it is us now, whom compassion has empowered, that we can now see how best we can empower our other children that are in such communities. Namuongo, this community here in Katanga, so many communities that I need, and we still need to support the children. Actually, on that note, how does the process work in terms of what of of identifying a child who is under the care and tutelage of uh, Compassion International Uganda. Wow. Uh, do I still remember some of my project work? <clears throat> um, of course, key number one is the needy of the neediest, regardless of whether you are an orphan or not an orphan. 
you have to be needy that is key yeah of course there's an assessment form they use and to come and assess your home and they might pick up to two, three children in a particular home they don't exceed three such that they give opportunity to other people who are in need also yeah briefly that's what i can say all right and um what i found very interesting about this homecoming is the theme chosen and redeemed for a purpose can you take us through uh, that theme what does it mean exactly and why was this the theme that was chosen for this particular event yeah just a little to say about it is uh it all goes back to what and why we are, are having this uh, uh get together come together for the alumni we want to give our contributions also uh, in whatever way we can uh, to uh, compassion more like um, how can i put it in uh, simple words like those of us who've gone through it and have benefited from it uh, from compassion uh, this is an opportunity for us to be a long time also contributors to uh, this uh, uh, to the cause also to see how steady it can also be like you mentioned earlier on that uh, probably compassion may want to pull out of the country but how can we through our uh, for example testimonies and uh, uh, examples try to convince them to stay here and uh, give more support because the need is not yet done despite the successes that uh, compassion has actually achieved uh, with the examples of us um, they still is still there. So uh, the theme is also derived from uh, the reasons uh, for, for this cause, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And talking about purpose, as alumni yourselves, mm. what, what expectations do you have for the day? Are, you, uh, are there some long-lost friends, part of the alumni, that you're looking forward to meeting? What uh, is getting you excited about the event? Mr. Derek, I'll start with you. Yeah, personally, th that's exactly it. Getting to see my old-time friends because uh, it was not just about the eating, the sponsorship, the, 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 the impacts uh, that they did uh, to us uh, through the spiritual impact, but also the social socialization uh, with one another we built big bonds with uh, our classmates we built big bonds with the uh, people that we went to the, the same uh, compassion branch with so I'm looking forward to seeing all of them but also uh, to see how they're doing in life like you you would want to understand who is who where is who and uh, how can I benefit from them? How can I be a benefit to them? And all together, how can we benefit those who are still uh, under us? I mean, who are still in compassion? Because uh, personally, I, I think I would want to, to, to help. So my expectations are more those. Looking forward to meeting my friends, finding out how they're doing. Hopefully, they're much better than I am. And uh, how best we can put our uh, efforts together to also help those who still need the help especially the kids who are still under compassion. Oh, fantastic. Mm. I hope that happens. Uh, Mr. Bennett, what are your expectations no. as an individual? I know that you've told us some of the things we can, ex and we can expect, but as an alumni for you, what do you expect on the day? Um, I won't be so different from Derek because we all would love to see our friends and uh, the way I'm wired, I always think more about other people. And so when he was talking, I remembered the, what can I call it? It's not a core value. I think it is a mission statement of Compassion International. It says, releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. Now, <clears throat> this is one of the things that I cry out to see every day. Uh, these guys, whosoever organized this said, chosen and redeemed for a purpose. Chosen from those poor backgrounds, redeemed from poverty for a particular purpose. Wherever we are, in the army, in government, we have people in parliament, we have people in education sector, we have people in almost every place, in media. We are kind of unique because we went through a particular kind of program that really opened our minds 
there are so many boundaries of poverty even if you have money you might be having as but your kind of poverty but compassion opened us whole so we cry out to see that other children also get that kind of benefit or that kind of opportunity yep and so that is one of the things i'm yearning to see uh, grasped uh, nurtured and it is almost at the lips of each and every one how can i release a neighbor from poverty well fantastic and um to buttress on that point uh, even after this event what I, what is the future of compassion international uganda what would you uh is compassion international uganda looking to do in let's say the next five to ten years in terms of helping uh, raise uh, uh, godly children one uh, compassion is still here in uganda that one needs to be clarified on but it is closing on some of the old old places where it started its ministry from places like masaka abujiri kampala and now it is extending its arm its arm of charity to the places like karamoja deep deep ends where compassion had not reached yet why, why is it closing in places um, like masaka when you assess the need in Kampala vis-a-vis -vis in places like Karamoja, those up, other upcountry places, you find impact in Kampala. And now that's why Compassion is coming up with such kind of organizations that, yes, as a Compassion official, we are pulling out of Kampala, but through the alumni movement, we can still minister to the Kampala community or to other communities where Compassion has pulled. So in the next five years, we want to see a sponsorship now instead of coming to Uganda, to be coming from Uganda. I'll give you an example. There are children, when we are still on program, you could find his sponsor is Compassion UK, Compassion Australia, Compassion US. Once, like, sponsor's name, they put Compassion UK, Compassion uh, Korea or South Korea. And so we want to grow to that level where we have a child sponsor is Compassion Uganda. So Compassion is mobilizing resources through the alumni, through the, their staff at head office, uh, through different different people, and now they come up with this one pool of money to be able to sponsor a child officially as Compassion Uganda, not expecting sponsorship from only those other countries. Yeah. And how could how can people or in the wider or greater public support uh, the activities of Compassion International Uganda? Um, if you go to the national office in Kololo, there's a, a basket, there's a particular place they designated for people to offer, but different different projects also have come up with different innovations of how we can give support. I'll mention Agape, I think they have a, a box. Every Sunday there is a box written on clearly, donate to support a child. When you go to Entebbe, that is at the Reverence Church, you will still find such a box. Uh, NTV has dropped some boxes even at some banks like uh, Stanbic Bank to help mobilize resources to help children. So, yeah, we will encourage more to still adapt to such kind of ventures such that yeah, donations and sponsorships are open to other people. I think when it is officially opened, they will clarify and guide more on how best you can be a sponsor, how best you can be just a donor. There are always guidelines. They will guide us. Fantastic. Yeah. Now we look forward to uh, the homecoming and uh, we hope to hear more testimonies from the homecoming but as well from the work uh, and the evangelism that uh, Compassion International Uganda is doing. You've heard how you can support, so please do so. Thank you so much, Mr. Sawira Benon. Thank you so much, Mr. Derek, for coming here to tell us about this special event. We look forward to it indeed. Now, that's it for our conversation right now. It's time for us to join Carol on issues at hand as she's going to talk about something big that's been happening in our country of recent, so you do not want to go anywhere. It's about the unfortunate accidents that are happening on our water bodies in Uganda. So we want to understand what the problem is and what the solution is. Don't go anywhere as you get into issues at hand. Broadcasting from the 